Okay, so the question is, what is a power of attorney? I have a lot of clients who come and see me who have no idea what that is. They came in for a will or they came in because they think a trust is what they need and you know they didn't even know what a power of attorney was. So a power of attorney is a legal document that gives another person the legal power to act on your behalf while you're still alive. It is only in effect while you're alive. Um, at your loved one's death, it is not in effect anymore. It's done. Um, and so it cannot be used after your loved one passes away. Now, the person that's appointed in the power of attorney is called the agent. And the person who signs a power of attorney that makes someone else their agent is called the principal. And now the person that you appoint as your agent does not have to be an attorney. Um, usually what I've seen is it is a loved one, a child or a spouse. Um, and if that person does not have a child or a spouse, it's normally a sibling or somebody that they, you know, trust with the, their life. Um, a hiccup that I will say that I have seen recently is I had somebody come in who had a power of attorney um, and they went to their bank and their bank said, unfortunately, we can't accept this because they looked into the agent, his history, and he had some financial issues. Um, he had filed for bankruptcy and possibly had some credit issues. I'm, I'm not sure, but for the statutory terrible power of attorney, AKA the financial, the, the financial power of attorney, um, certain places can reject it if they have a policy internally that says, oh, we looked into this person's history and they have some background issues that we don't want to mess with, right? So they have the authority to reject even a perfectly drafted power of attorney if they have an internal policy that says, we can't accept this. Um, and so that's just an issue I ran into recently that I wanted to make y'all aware of, um, that if you do have a person as your agent, you need to make sure that, um, they will be acceptable in that way. Um, so what do you need for a power of attorney? Um, again, the person you trust with your life and sound mind, and, we'll, and we will go into that a bit more. So what does sound mind mean? So sound mind means when the person is in the office and I hand them the paperwork and I explain everything to them, uh, they're able to understand the effect of that power of attorney, that what it's going to do, um, and that that person will be able to act on their behalf and, uh, and the extent of actions that that person will then be able to take on their behalf once a document is signed. So they need to understand what is happening at that time. Um, so for example, probably a person in the later stages of Alzheimer's cannot sign a power of attorney if I ask them questions, you know, and they, they don't know what they're signing or they maybe don't know what day of the week it is, um, who, who the president is, the year, I ask those sometimes if there's maybe a question of that type of um, issue. Okay, so the basics. So the biggest one is going to be the statutory terrible power of attorney. And again, this would be for your finances and personal maintenance. I can't stress enough that this is a very powerful document. Um, there's two ways that you can, I guess, have it be in effect. So you can have it in effect immediately once you sign it, 
which is what our firm normally would r recommend. The second way is upon your loved one's disability and incapacity, um, it's in effect. Now, the second way, the hiccup there is that you need to have a doctor's um, note or authorization that basically declares this person is incapacitated, they can't sign this. And if there's anything that needs to be done right away, you know, that, that could take time. Um, so what I would recommend is that you have it be effective immediately and not wait until you're declared disabled or incapacitated. Um, but it's, they're both legally fine. Legally, you can do both. And then I've heard stories where a person has it in effect immediately and they call and say, my daughter took all my money because, <laughs> again, it's very powerful. But if that's the situation that goes more towards who they pick as the agent um, and maybe not the document itself. Um, so you want to make sure the person that you pick, again, is somebody that you trust with your life. Um, and then the medical power of attorney, this would, this would authorize an agent to receive and make any medical choices on your loved one's behalf. And it typically does become effective immediately once it's executed. Um, the only, you know, you do need two witnesses and a notary but you cannot, um, the witnesses cannot be in charge of your health care um, or have any type of stake in your estate. So um, that's definitely one that you would probably want to have executed at a lawyer's office. Um, and that's something I'll go into a bit more later. Um, then there's the special power of attorney and this special or limited power of attorney, which I don't do too often, I don't really have too many who want this particular type or it's not needed, I guess, in their situation. Um, but the powers with this are limited to only a specific situation or area. Like if, some, if the principal wants to sell a house, but they're not able to be there. Or for example, my husband and I, you know, I'm expecting, I'm six months pregnant. And once we have our child, if we leave to go on a trip or something, we're out of the country, I would probably do a special power of attorney so that my mom can be the agent and make any choices for our child while we're away. Um, so in short, it starts and stops at different times. <laughs> 